And these, these numbers just, they couldn't be right. They're just beyond any, beyond any normal bounds of probability. I was a partner head of research at two multi-billion dollar hedge funds. One of them was a Tiger Club, I was a partner there. And um, before that, I was a sell side analyst. What I tend to focus on is the balance sheet. And it's funny because the balance sheet's really an overlooked um, statement. Not many people pay as much attention to it as they should. But you can learn a huge amount from things, looking at things like working capital uh, analysis. And our process is very much founded on two sets of comparisons. So what we like to do is we like to look back in time at an individual company and understand why a particular ratio, why a particular level is where it is today in the context of its history. And we then do the same thing. We look at a particular valuation parameter or a particular ratio today in the context of the peer group. And quite often what we'll do is we'll look at the peer group's history. And it's amazing by doing this what you can learn. So Patisserie Ballery is an interesting case study. Patisserie Ballery, for those that don't live in the UK, um, is a very, it, it's a, a very simple concept. It's a cafe that sells cakes. So it's a sort of place that you would go with your mum to go and have a cup of tea and a piece of cake. You sit down, nice ambience, reasonably large menu, reasonably large selection, nothing very complicated about it. And it was extremely well presented to the stock market. And they were very good at presenting themselves. So they're very good at painting the equity story. We're opening more stores. We've got a, you know, we've got a very profitable business and we're going to roll out more stores and we're going to grow and grow and grow. But Disney Valerie is a classic instance of this. So, very simple, do margin comparisons. I think margin comparisons are an incredibly powerful tool and everybody says that they do them, but they don't do them properly. So, Patisserie Valerie was making margins which were on a level with those of Starbucks. And in fact, at one year, its margins were higher than those of Starbucks. And when you start to think about this, it's obvious that that can't be right. Because you go into a Starbucks, most of the people are taking the coffee away, right? You go into a Patisserie Valerie, almost everybody is sitting down and consuming the product. Patisserie Valerie make cakes. And if you look at the cakes, they are incredibly intricate. They're full of cream, which means two things. Labor cost, and they go off. You think about coffee, Coffee is about the highest margin product you can get. What is, what's in coffee? Some beans, some hot water, some electricity. So if you look at the structure of a restaurant business and you look at its cost base, the two single largest cost items are labor, 35, 40% costs in the UK, and rent, 10 to 12% costs in the UK. It's absolutely impossible that a company like Patisserie Bar Valerie making these highly labor-intensive cakes which go off, which are, must have, must have a lower gross margin than a cup of coffee, selling them at the table, so a waiter or a waitress needs to come and deliver the menu, take the order, bring the food, take it away, bring the bill, occupying that floor space, taking up all that labor cost and rent, it's impossible that their margins could be higher or anywhere near those of Starbucks. And it's just a very simple comparison. Part of the reason people didn't twig this, I think, is that, of course, Starbucks isn't quoted in the UK. So people were looking at its margins versus the other quoted UK peers. And although the margins were much higher than the quoted peers, there was an assumption that it was a much better company, it was a much more efficient company, the executive chairman had a very high regard in the, in the stock market, 
very strong reputation. And they thought, well, maybe he's got some secret sauce. But when you start to do that international comparison, it was obvious that Patisserie Valerie's numbers couldn't be right. I was actually asked to do a presentation on Patisserie Valerie to an investment conference as soon as I opened the account. I mean, the, the margins leapt off the page at me. I mean, it, it was absolutely obvious. And when you start to look at these things and you find one thing going wrong, when you start digging, you then find, oh, hang on a second, it's not just the margins. Look at the, look at the stocks, look at the inventory. The Disney Valerie was about three times the size of another similar business in the UK called Paul. And um, Paul does effectively the same thing. You would be hard pushed to, to distinguish between the two businesses, really. And um, when you look at Paul's balance sheet, Paul was making a third of Disney Valerie's revenue. And it had a quarter of a million pounds worth of stock. Patisserie Valerie, a business three times the size, had five million pounds worth of stock. So 20 times the inventory for three times the size of business. Well, it's highly unlikely that that's right. And when you see wrong levels of inventory, wrong levels of debtors, or very high levels of inventory or debtors, that's usually a very telltale signal that there's a problem. And working capital ratios are something that I, I look at very, very closely indeed. And these, these numbers just, they couldn't be right. They're just beyond any, beyond any normal bounds of probability. It transpired that the finance director had borrowed 20 million quid without telling the rest of the board. And, you know, I mean, if you wrote this as a novel, people go, oh, that, that's nonsense. You know, that couldn't possibly happen but it happened in real life.